In the previous section, we looked at some basic properties of primitive roots modulo m. Let's review the definition. Definition. If g is an integer and the order of g modulo m is phi of m, we say that g is a primitive root modulo m. The idea of a primitive root is that as you take different powers of it, you cycle through all the elements in the reduced residue system modulo m. This chart shows us all the primitive roots modulo m for various values of m. Notice that some have primitive roots and others don't. If you spent some time sifting through the data, you would eventually discover that there's a pattern for when primitive roots exist. There is a lot of interesting mathematics embedded here, but we will only focus on just a small piece of this result. Theorem. For each prime p, there exist primitive roots modulo p. Consider the reduced residue system zp star, which consists of the numbers 1, 2, up to p minus 1, modulo p, and let n of h denote the number of those integers that have order h. Since we know that if a has order h, then h divides p minus 1, and we know that every element in the reduced residue system has exactly one order, we can count all p minus 1 elements by grouping them together based on their order. We will show that n of h is either 0 or it's phi of h. If n of h is 0, then there's nothing to prove. So suppose that n of h is not equal to 0. Then there exists an a such that a to the h is congruent to 1 modulo p. Now consider the equation x to the h is congruent to 1 mod p. We know this equation has at most h mutually incongruent solutions, but we also know that a, a squared up to a to the h are all solutions that are mutually incongruent, and so we know that there are exactly h solutions. Therefore, all solutions of this equation are of the form a to the r for some r between 1 and h, inclusively. But we know that a to the r has order h if and only if the GCD of r and h is 1, and so there must be exactly phi of h numbers that have order h. In other words, if n of h is not equal to 0, then n of h is equal to phi of h. For any given value of h, we still don't know whether n of h is 0 or phi of h, but we do know that n of h is less than or equal to phi of h for all h. Suppose it were the case that n of h is strictly less than phi of h, for some h. Then we would have this inequality. The sum on the right can be evaluated using the result we obtained when looking at arithmetic functions. But when we do that, we see we have a contradiction. This means that n of h equals phi of h for all h dividing p minus 1. In particular, we can see that there are phi of p minus 1 primitive roots modulo p. If we look back at the chart from earlier, we can verify that this is the case. It is important to recognize that while we may know how many primitive roots there are, we have not explored any methods for actually figuring out what they are. There are some techniques that are available that are better than guessing at random, but there is no general formula that allows you to find them. This is something you'll have to explore on your own if you're interested. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.